guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here. So today I am standing up and you might think I'm looking down at you, that's because my tripod is not like tall enough for me to be able to put it up here. So I have to talk a little bit further down, but that's okay. Um, today I'm going to be doing another one of my bookshelf tours, hence why I'm standing up, because I'm doing my yellow, orange and red books. Um, this is probably one of my favourite shelves just because I think it really looks cool. Um, I also, just before we get started properly, I really hope you can see because my I can't really like zoom in because I don't have autofocus, or I do, but it doesn't work properly. Um, so in here, I'll come a little closer. I have a little tiny um, Funko Pop type thing um, of Harry Potter. This one my sister bought me for Christmas, I think this year, and this was the, um, you know one of those like mystery ones that you don't know what you're going to get until you open the box. Um, and this is what I got, so that's really cool. But he sits on this shelf. I'm just going to pop him out of the way down there for a minute. And let's get started with the yellow books. First book, like I said, I'm really sorry I'm really far away, but I, can, I can't get it to fit me, all of me in, and this, and do that at the same time. So I really hope that you don't mind. I will link all the books down below like I always do anyway, and hopefully you can still see the point of them. So the first one is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler and this book I saw on Am I Right and um, channel Annie from Am I Right? So I'll link her channel below. Um, she, but this I think is one of her favourite books. Um, this was actually shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize of 2014 apparently. I don't really know too much about this book. Um, it says Rosemary doesn't talk very much and about certain things she's silent. She had a sister Fern, her whirlwind other half, who vanished from her life in circumstances she wishes she could forget. And it's been 10 years since she last saw her beloved older brother, Lowell. Now at college, Rosemary starts to see that she can't go forward without going back. Back to the time when, age five, she was sent away from home to her grandparents and returned to find Fern gone. So I think this is about, like, siblings and, and that sort of thing. So I'm really interested to read this. Um, and I love this cover. It's really, really pretty. Next up, I have A Thousand Splendid Sons by Carla Tussaini, who wrote The Kite Runner. And I really need to get to this book. I haven't read any Carla Tussaini before, but I've heard lots about it. I believe this is a book about the Taliban. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's about the Taliban taking over in Kabul, and it's about people, the people who were living in Kabul at the time. Um, I've heard that this is really heartbreaking, and um, like I said, The Kite Runner is meant to be amazing, and I think this one should be too, because it's written by the same person, so I'm excited for this. I then have My Not So Perfect Life by Sophie Kinsella, which I hauled in my book haul a few months ago, and I still haven't read it, but I do adore Sophie Kinsella and I love her writing. This is about a woman who I believe on like Instagram, is it Instagram? Yeah, on her Instagram she shows this like glamorous job and this amazing London apartment and everything, but actually it's just the way the pictures have been made to look. She lives in this tiny apartment that hardly has any space, but she sort of manages to make it look really interesting the way that she takes the photos. And I think it's kind of about that. So really, really interested. Um, I think the whole social media and how we portray ourselves is really fascinating. So hopefully this one lives up to my expectations. I then have Four Blind Mice by James Patterson, which is a book in the Alex Cross series by James Patterson. I talked about in my blue bookshelf, which I will link below, how I how I have a couple of books from this series already, and I do plan on reading the whole thing, so, um, like, at some point through. So hopefully um, this one I will get to at some point. I don't actually know which book it is. I think it's number six or something. Five, I think. Um, and, yeah, so um, hopefully this will happen at some point, but I do need to read the others first. Then I have a Wordsworth classic edition of Robin Hood by Henry Gilbert, which is not a story that I've ever read. I obviously know the story of Robin Hood. I've seen the Disney movie and I've also seen lots of other movie adaptations. But I've never actually read the complete actual story, so I'm quite interested to read this. If you don't know Robin Hood, I feel like you probably do. It's about a guy who robs from the rich to give, money, give to the poor, and it's about a sheriff in Nottingham and them trying to capture him. And yeah, I'm really, really interested in actually reading the, the original material. Then I have The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee, which I just think the colour... I love yellow, so this kind of, like I said, side of my um, shelf is just really pleasing for me. Um, I've heard quite a few things about this, actually. A lot of people like this. Um, I believe it's about a dystopian world where they all live on in a thousand floor... Was it thousand? Story tower. And the higher up in the tower you live, the, like, better your, like, social 
level is or something um, and it starts I think somebody falls um, and it's set in 2118 which is really interesting because it's like a hundred years from now. You all know I love a dystopian so really interested to find this. I don't think I've ever heard anything like this like living in a tower kind of thing um, you know as a hierarchical thing so this could be really really fun. And then I have a weird book that I think I picked up in a yeah I picked it up in Dorothy House um, charity shop um, quite a while ago now and I still haven't read it but something about it I just couldn't get rid of it when I did my book on hauls which I'll link below um, in December I just couldn't get rid of this because something about it really fascinated me and yet I still haven't picked it up so this is Sushi for Beginners by Marion Keys and I love Marion Keys writing I think she's really really talented she writes really cool like a lot of the time it's kind of like I don't know if they call it women's fiction I don't know if it is women's fiction, I don't know, I don't know how you would kind of describe it, but I'll just really quickly read the back to you because um, I think her like romantic comedy site will come out in this. So this says, damn it, she realised, I think I'm having a nervous breakdown. Hotshot magazine editor Lisa Edwards' career is destined for high-rise New York when suddenly she's diverted to low-rise Dublin, but what can she do about it? Ashlyn Kennedy, Lisa's super organised assistant, worries about everything from her lack of waste to the lack of men in her life. She's even anxious about a little bit of raw fish. Cloda Kelly, I'm probably saying that wrong, I think it's an Irish name and I'm really sorry if I've pronounced that completely wrong, um, is Ashling's best friend and has her prince, her beautiful kids and a lovely house. Everything in fact that Ashling ever wanted. She should be, yet she's not happy. Three women on the verge of happiness and even closer to complete breakdown. Which way will they all fall? And I just, I'm excited to read this. I really, really need to pick this up. Then I have another book in the Mediator series by Meg Cabot, and this one is Heaven Sent. This is actually the sixth and final book that I own, I think. Um, I have mentioned um, other ones in the previous um, bookshelf tours that I did, which obviously I'll link below. But yeah, I really want to read this series, and like I said, I own most of them, so this is another one in that series. And then the final one on that little side there is um, the World is Full of Married Men by Jackie Collins. If you don't know, I'm quite a big fan of Jackie Collins' writing. I know it's not exactly highbrow, but um, something about it just really just, it just amuses me and I think it's really great. This is probably one of the smallest ones of her books that I own or I've seen. Um, and it's usually about like scandal and Hollywood and glamour and I just love it. So then we're on to the middle, which kind of goes from yellow through to the red. So the orange are kind of in the middle. So the first one I have is actually a Stephen King book, strangely enough, and I've, I've never heard of this one before I found it. I found this in a, again, a Dorothy House charity shop. I do go to that charity shop quite a lot because they normally have quite good books. Um, and this is called Rose Madder by Stephen King. And it says it's a brilliant dark-hued fable of the gender wars, a haunting love story, and a hold your breath until you gasp triumph of suspense. Rose Madder is Stephen King at his electrifying best. As far as I know, this is about a woman who wakes up um, and realises that her husband is going to kill her and she runs away. And then something happens and she's kind of constantly looking over her shoulder and I don't really know too much else about it other than this is, like I said, not one I'd heard of before. I'm obviously going to read it because you know I love Stephen King and I'm reading all of his books at some point. So I have another one to add to my collection. Then I have The Surgeon by Tess Gerritsen and this is the first in the Rosalian Isles series which I may have mentioned I'm reading, going to start reading them all. Um, I've read a few of the Rosalian Isles books but um, I haven't ever read it from the beginning. This is The Surgeon. I believe I've read The Surgeon before but I do feel like it was a long time ago so I don't really remember. I think it's quite gruesome at times. Um, this is about... Um, which one's which? Let me get it right. Jane Rizzoli, who is a homicide detective, and Isles, I believe, is the, um, if I can find it, like the medical examiner who's like finding out the case, and then they kind of pair up and solve cases and things. So I've never seen the TV series, which I'm sure is really good, um, but I do really, really want to start reading the series through because, like I said, I've read a couple here and there, but never actually read the whole thing. Then we have quite an exciting book and I've never talked about this on this channel before but this is Poetry in Motion Hampshire. Um, this is poetry by 11 to 18 year olds and this is um, kind of basically there was a, a regional poetry competition in Hampshire. Now if you don't know I used to live in Hampshire when I was, I live in Portsmouth basically. I moved there, well I was born there but then I we moved where I am now and then I moved back for about a, not even a year actually um, in my um, 
I think I was about 11 at the time, hence the 11 to 18 year olds. And I actually have a poem that is published in this book. I actually won the poetry competition, or I was one of the winners, there was a few. Um, and I am on page, where am I? I think it's like page six. Yes, it's page six. Um, I read it back now and I'm a bit like, oh, but that's not really like my best writing. But I loved it and I just think it was really fun. Um, let me know if you'd like me to kind of post this on Twitter or something uh, or or just maybe do like a reading of it or something on one of my videos. But um, yeah, it's not the most, like I don't think it's the best I read now, but I think it was really interesting. And actually it's really cool because my best friend at school when I was 11 is also, she also was one of the winners and she's on the same page as me. So yeah, but I've got a copy of this. I think my grandparents have, my mum's got a copy. And I will never ever throw this away because it's just so special to me that I was like published when I was 11, so awesome. Then I have The Queen of the Tailing by Erica Johansson, which is a YA fantasy novel about a, a girl who is um, like destined for the throne and I believe she is, um, they are sort of transporting her from where she's been living up until that point um, to where she needs to be in order to... Um, take the throne and it's about the kind of journey I think from between the two places because basically people are trying to kill her because they want to take the throne instead so um yeah I've not read this obviously yet but I've heard lots of really good things a lot this is kind of a big booktube book and I also think there's like more in the series now I think so yeah I need to, to get to this one quite soon I then have um Orange is the New Black My Time in a Women's Prison by Piper Kerman and I'm sure most of you know that this is a series on Netflix um, and um, this is the kind of true story behind it um, of Piper Kerman who actually went to a women's prison and was there um, and it's about the things that she discovered and I'm really interested to know how much this influenced this, the TV series and how actually true to life that is um, and yeah I love the series so I'm hoping that I'll like the book too. Then we have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott which is one of my favourite classics. I really read, I read this as a child and I loved it. It's about four sisters, Jo, Meg, Beth and Amy whose father is away fighting in the Civil War and them and their mother have sort of fallen on hard times a little bit and it's about how they get through. Jo is a writer so I find that really interesting. She has this kind of very passionate writing um, soul I guess you could say and then it's also heartbreaking at times. The sister's relationship is just amazing and um, I think there's another couple in the series like Little Men I think was one of them and um, yeah I have never read the second and however many there are but um, I really want to reread this one because I've never actually read this particular edition because I bought this maybe last year or something. Then we have Port Mortuary by Patricia Cornwell which is another book in the Dr K Scarpetta series. I think this is like number 20 or something. Um, again I mentioned in previous videos that I want to read this whole of the series. I think I've read the first two now. Um, so yeah this is just another one to add to the list. Then I have Specials by Scott Westerfeld which is the third and final book in the Uglies trilogy and you'll know if you watched my blue shelves that I talked about Uglies there and I do own all of the books. Um, I actually funnily enough bought them from um, Dorothy House charity shop, I don't know if I've mentioned that. Um, yeah, really looking forward to this, it's like a dystopian book. I then have The Zoo by Christopher Wilson and I will link below my I think it was my May chocolate and book unboxing video where um, I, got, I got this in the box and this is like a satire novel about the Russian, some kind of Russian war. I can't remember if it's like World War II or if it was like a separate one. I can't honestly remember but I am looking forward to this because I don't really read much satire. Then I have three of um, James Patterson's book shots which are like 120 pages um, and they kind of, a lot of them fit in with other series that he's done, in fact all three of these do. So the first two I have are both from the Private series, which you know that I love. One, the first one is Private Gold, and then I have Private Royals, um, and then the final one is in the Alex Cross series, the same as whatever one I just talked about that was Alex Cross, and this one is Cross Kill. I don't really know what about, these ones are specifically about, um, but I know I'm going to love them anyway. Then I have Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Groudon, which I believe is set in World War II, and it's about a motorcycle race where the winner gets to meet Hitler and the main character, what's her name, Yael I think it is, is wants to win the race so that she can meet Hitler and kill him. And this sounds amazing to me. Oh, no, it's not set in the Second World War, I remember now. It's an alternate um, story about if Germany won um, and if Hitler won basically. And still it's about her wanting to kill Hitler. So yeah, really, really looking forward to this. I feel like 
World War II, as you all know, is my favourite thing, so I'm feeling like this will be really cool to see how it would have changed had Germany have won the Second World War. And the final book on this little bit is One of Your Own, The Life and Death of Myra Hindley, written by Carol Ann Lee. If you don't know who Myra Hindley is, she was one of the... Um, she murdered a load of children um, with Ian... Ian Brady, that was it. She was one of the Moors murderers um, in Yorkshire, and I... I have a morbid fascination with true crime and kind of um, the reasons why people kill and things like that. Um, and like I said, this is based on Myra, Hind Myra Hindley, who could not be more horrendous, actually. Um, and yeah, I'm interested to kind of hear from somebody about her life in prison as well, because I think this is partly to do with that. Um, and yeah, it could be fascinating. And then finally, we're on to the definitely red side of the shelf. So the first one I have is Kindred Spirits um, by Rainbow Rao, which is a small, uh, one of the World Book Day books. And you may notice that I threw this away um, in my book unhaul. I've left, definitely put this in the box. And then I just needed to get it back out because I do love um, Rainbow Rao's way books. I'm not a big fan so far of her adult next adult books, I've read one of them and I wasn't a big fan and I've got another to read so we'll see, but I just could not throw this away without reading it. So it's also about, what is it, 60 pages so it really will not take me right on. Next up I have another Jackie Collins book and this one is Vendetta, Lucky's Revenge and this is part of the Lucky Santangelo books. I love Lucky Santangelo, she is like a really badass character and I've read a lot of her books throughout my I wouldn't say childhood because this, you should not read these if you're a child. I definitely read these from like the age of like 16 um, to like 20. I loved Jackie Collins and I really just want to reread the books because I did love them so much and I really want to read them through. Um, again, I have no idea what order they go in, but um, I have one of them here. Next up, I have The Power by Naomi Alderman and this is a book about. Um, Basically, I'll just really quickly read. It says, all over the world, women are discovering they have the power. With a flick of the fingers, they can inflict terrible pain, even death. Suddenly, every man on the planet finds they've lost control. The day of the girls has arrived, but where will it end? And I think this could be really interesting because I think the idea of anyone being a, like any gender to be like being above everybody else is not great, I think. Um, but I think it's interesting that it's this way around because very often, obviously, it's um, kind of male dominated. So the fact that this is very much heavily female, I'm quite interested to find out. And um, I've heard really good things about this as well, so I'm looking forward to that. Next up, this is the heaviest book that, like, how many pages is this? Oh, it's 600 pages. I didn't realise it was quite that big. It doesn't look it, but it does definitely feel it. This is Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, and this is really fascinating because it's like written with like text messages and images and documents and things and I've heard really amazing things. I know that like there's like three of these books now and I still haven't read the first one but this is so like this is like one I want to I'm desperately wanting to read. Um I don't actually know anything of the story. Um I think it's um it's other in an on another world I feel like. Um yeah, other planets and things so again I'm not really I don't really want to know what it's meant to be about because I just think the I like the actual process of reading this is going to be really fun um I like mixed media books so this should be very very interesting then we have Mean Spirits which is another one in fact this is book five I believe of the Mediator series by Meg Cabot then we have Geek Girl by Holly Smale is that yeah I think so this I saw on whose channel was this Heart Full of Books, oh is that what their channel name? I'll link them below, it's the twins, Maddie and B, and I can't remember what their channel name is. I feel like it's a Heart Full of Books or something like that. Like I said, I'll link them below. They always talk about this, they love this kind of book, and um, I don't know too much about this other than I think it's a girl who's going from geek to chic, as the friend says. Um, I think there's loads in this series, so yeah, this is the first one. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to read it. I then have Keeping the Dead by Tess Gerritsen, and this is another one of the Rosalian Isles thrillers. Then we have The Sins of the Mother by Daniel Steele, and as I've mentioned before, I love Danielle Steele. I'm going to read the back because she writes so many different books that I just can't remember which this is. So this says, After building an empire that has made her a legend in business, Olivia spends months each year planning a lavish holiday for her family, now adults. More than anything, she hopes to express her love and her regret at all the important times she missed during her children's early years. 
This summer she has arranged a dream trip on a luxurious yacht in the Mediterranean, but old resentments die hard and Olivia is still running the business full time. As each of these individuals confronts the past and the challenges of the present and future, they also learn to accept the enduring, unconditional love of their family, and a mother who is both strong enough to take more than her fair share of the blame, and loving enough to accept them as they really are. The question is, can they do the same for her? And again, Danielle Steele's amazing, I think she's absolutely incredible, she always writes such well-prepared novels and I really can't wait to read more from her. And then the final book I have here is The Survivors Club by Lisa Gardner and this is about three survivors of, I believe, the College Hill Rapist and um, then the guy who's been accused of this crime gets shot down outside of the courtroom and obviously all three of them are the main suspects and it's about kind of how they get through that and figuring out what actually happened and things like that so this sounds really interesting you know i love a thriller so looking forward to this a lot and there we have it guys that is my red and orange and yellow and pink and green no uh red orange and yellow bookshelves and um, tour i hope that you like this video let me know um if you think i should read any of these first um i'd definitely be interested in hearing what is definitely my priority um, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and press the little notification bell down below so that you get notified when I upload the final shelf tour which is going to be the black shelf tour and also I've got my little book nook to go um, and yeah subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next one bye guys